Satellite Sisters is brought to you by MEA, the world's first midlife wisdom school. MEA has beautiful campuses in Baja and the soon-to-open Santa Fe campus, and workshops both in-person and online on subjects like managing transition, cultivating purpose, and reframing retirement. You can find information at meawisdom.com. That's meawisdom.com. Navigate what's next. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. What's a satellite sister? The person you call when the best thing in your life happens or the worst. The person that gets you up, gets you going, and gets you through. And every once in a while, changes your mind. This podcast is part pep talk, part weekly check-in. Like grabbing coffee with a friend. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the Satellite Sisterhood. You are listening to Satellite Sisters. We're so happy to have you today. Today's show is Sense of Direction, and we're going to work it. I'm Leanne Dolan here in Pasadena, California. I'm a podcaster, a writer, a producer. And today's question is, what's your favorite direction, Liz? No, what's my favorite direction? Okay, this is Liz Dolan. I'm in Santa Monica, which is about as far west as you can get. So really love the sort of go west young man thing. But I would have to say overall, what gives me the warm and fuzzy feeling would be Northwestly. And you know, I love going to the Northwest. <laughs> I love hang- I love hanging out in Oregon. I've lived in the Northwest for a while. So I'm saying Northwest is my favorite direction. How about okay. you, Julie? <laughs> Hi, this is Julie Dolan. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm a podcaster. I'm a, um, a sister, a mother, a grandmother. And for me, my favorite direction is forward, okay? <laughs> I like to go forward. Uh, I, I don't like to go backwards. I don't like to, like, back up in a car on a tennis court. I don't like to go backwards, okay? I don't like walking backwards. Uh, I don't know, like, anything about that. Forward. I like to go forward. Okay, okay. Leanne, how okay. about you? Well, I'm really tempted to say serpentine, you know? <laughs> serpentine. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. Every time. <laughs> Family joke. <laughs> you know what, though, Liz, I have to agree with you. I mean, you love Northwest. I just say West. I, to uh-huh. me, that is an expansive direction. It means you're traveling to new places. It's big. It's wide open. It's big blue skies. So my favorite direction is West. Okay. Uh, but today on our Sense of Direction show, uh, Liz, you're going to start us off with the with the opening thoughts on your Sense of Direction. Mm-hmm. But Julie, you have sort of an interesting piece you're going to talk about, which is um, how many times in your life your name's changed? Your yes. Name's changed. I, I, I've changed my name a lot, and it goes to the issue of direction and identity, and we're going to talk about it. All right. Nice. As you wrote a piece in our book, Satellite Sisters, Uncommon Senses, and this show is our, our final of five shows looking at the uncommon senses, um, three things you learn by 40. Uh, and, yes. uh, and you're going to update that for us. Have you learned yeah. anything new since then? I'm going to I'm going to let you know. Wouldn't it be okay. great? Because it's been a while since I turned 40. So <laughs> it would be great if I had learned some new things, but we shall see. All right. Also, for those of you who are listening, maybe you're listening for the first time. You might want to start at another show. But um <laughs> This, this is actually our final Satellite Sisters original podcast. Uh, we've been doing this for 23 years, so we have some thoughts on that. We've received some wonderful uh, notes, uh, emails, comments from you all. So we want to talk to the listeners and, and thank them for all those notes. Also, we're going to give you our themes for 2024, just so you know where we're headed in this Sense of Direction show. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a big thing. Where are we headed, Leon? I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna find out. I'm yeah, going forward. Find okay. Forward. Forward. Okay. Forward. Forward. Okay. <laughs> so I wanted to tackle sort of a setup for sense of direction, sisters. When we originally wrote Satellite Sisters Uncommon Senses, this was the fifth, the final of the uncommon senses. First was sense of connection. Second was sense of self. Third was sense of humor. Fourth was sense of adventure. And the last one was sense of direction, where we all wanted to try to write pieces about how do we know where we want to go? What do we want to do with our lives? And I really, I really started thinking about that and realized it's not so much the question I wanted to ask myself was not what do you want to be when you grow up, but more who do you want to be when you grow up? 
because life isn't really a choice of being like a firefighter versus a figure skater. You mm -hmm. know, I feel like mm -hmm. the important things in life are learning how to be a friend and a family member, learning how to be a contributor to the community, and also, you know, an explorer of the world. So it became clear to me as I got older that the best thing I could do for my own sense of direction was kind of knit together the best attributes of the people we grew up around. And we were very lucky to be surrounded by some people who were great examples. So it's funny reading this original piece in the 20-year-old book because the first attribute I mention, okay, this is a good news, bad news situation, people. Uh, <laughs> good news, bad news is that um, I, I wanted to be patient. Okay. Uh, good news is <laughs> I still want to be patient. Bad news is still not. Okay. <laughs> still want, still not. So, so I got that going on for me. Is it too late? I don't know. I, maybe. I don't think so. I, I would like to still try to gain a greater sense of patience. And I think about our mom when I think about that. I just think about like putting eight kids in eight snowsuits and eight hats and eight pairs of gloves just so we could go outside and play on a snowy January afternoon in Connecticut, right? If you can do that, we, I would never be able to do that. But say, but, <laughs> but right. And Liz, keep in mind, it was pre-Velcro, right? Yes, right. <laughs> uh, my God, yes. So uh, that is the test. I'll never pass that test, but, you know, patience, I could use a little more patience. Uh, the next on my list originally was open heartedness. And I think we saw a lot of this in the adults around us growing up, not just in our parents, but also in our aunts and uncles with whom we spent most of our holidays and summer visits. And there's some crazy combination of cousins after a long car drive that was always in a hot Ford LTD station wagon. But whenever we got where we were all going in our hot Ford LTD station wagons, we all just blended in as one giant family. And didn't you always feel like Aunt Patty and Aunt Virginia and Aunt Eleanor and Uncle Dick and, and Uncle Harry, they were all just like, just, we were just all one big giant family, right? Yes. That was a good point, Liz. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's, I mean, they were sort of, they took us in as much as they took their own children in. So I have appreciated that as I've gone through life. Um, later in life, I've really come to appreciate how much effort and planning it takes just to do that, just to be together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that led me to the next attribute on my list, which was making room for fun. Right. Right. So maybe most people wouldn't have this on their like top list of things that are important in their future. But I think it's obvious now, if you listen to Satellite Sisters for a, for a long time, that we come from a long line of fun seekers. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if there's a gene for that. Leon, did that come up in your recent <laughs> Ancestry.com? I don't know. If there's, there's probably a, a risk taking gene. I don't know. I'll have to yeah. double check list. I'll double yeah. check the fun gene. The fun gene, I you know, maybe there's a gene for it, or maybe it's just a habit you can learn. I think it's probably more like that. But when I think of our Aunt Virginia and Uncle Dick Kirshner in Sudbury, Mass., you know, they were total fun seekers. Virginia ran a local theater program, and I remember going to see her production of Our Town that she staged in an old New England cemetery. No, she was, was so fun. far ahead of her time, wasn't she? Yeah. Far, <laughs> come on. Aunt Virginia was the best, <laughs> and also her husband, Uncle Dick. There was never a family holiday when Uncle Dick did not show up with silly novelty toys for all the kids. There were the obvious ones like kazoo's, and then there were kookier ones like the year he brought those birds that would drink out of a glass of water <laughs> if you set them up right. Oh my Fascinating. god! Fascinating. We love those. <laughs> Uncle Dick had some secret supplier of mainly discontinued circus clown supplies, you know, <laughs> and that shows you have a sense of fun. Um, but that kind of fun also takes effort and planning, which I especially appreciate now as I've gotten older. Next on my list was bravery. Uh, bravery is an attribute that I could look around and see in our family in, in small ways and big. I think it was pretty brave and fun, too. Uh, that every time there was a big ticker tape parade in New York City for the Gemini or Apollo astronauts, 
our mother took us all out of school and into the city so we would not miss history being made, right? <laughs> like, I think that's brave. Again, so many of us and only one of her. But there we were, ticker tape parades, bang. Um, Julie, I think you've shown a lot of ba- bravery as an adult, like moving from comfy California to Thailand and then from Bangkok, Thailand to Moscow, Russia. I mean, that takes a lot of bravery, right? I don't know what if it was bravery or, you know, I don't know what it was, Liz, but I did it <laughs> and I feel like I'm better for it. But uh, you're right. Yes. Yeah. I think you had to be brave. You yeah. took some courage. Yes. You just have to, t- you have to make the leap. And Leon, I think it's super brave to actually write fiction, which is fully invented stories that you create, just like in your head, you create them and then actually put them out into the world for anyone to read. I mean, I, I would find that terrifying, and yet you do it over and over again. Brave, I'd say. Brave. <laughs> well, it's it's not that brave to write it. It's brave to publish it. It's yeah, brave to let okay. other people read it. That's when you yeah. really realize, what am I doing? Oh, yes. my gosh. People are going to read this. <laughs> yeah. Anyone gets to say whatever I want about what I wrote? No. Yes, publicly. Uh, yeah. Anyway, and then, you know, I've also witnessed other bravery in the family when people break away to do something for themselves, to go live in a monastery or to quit drinking or to rediscover their creative souls or to carry on after loss. I think there's a lot of everyday bravery that we all need and we need to honor in the people around us. Uh, And the last attribute is conviction. Uh, Because we were young in the 60s and 70s, well, maybe not you, Leon, but Julie and I. Were yes, young. we were there. <laughs> Leon, you. this is the last show. Do you want to remind us how much younger you are than, than... I'm a decade younger than you, Julie. <laughs> oh, good. Because somebody... A generation younger than all of you. Somebody might have forgotten that point. Okay, carry on, Liz. <laughs> so, you know, just paying attention to the world in the 60s and 70s, uh, we witnessed a lot of change and a lot of struggle. And I think that we could see that the grownups in our lives believed that their lives had larger meaning and larger responsibility. And I think here we are now in another time where really big ideas are being challenged and fought over. And I'm glad that I grew up knowing that it's important to have a point of view about what you believe, and it's important to act on what you believe. So there you go, sense of direction. Do my best to be patient and open-hearted, make room for fun, but also be brave and live according to larger convictions. So is there still time to be all those things when I grow up? Mm, I hope so. (laughs) I hope so. So that's what I think, sisters. Liz, I loved I loved reading this essay in preparation for today uh, as uh, now as much as I did 20 years ago. And when I read it to over 20 years ago, I know I was inspired by it. I was like, yeah, look what Liz is doing. This is great. She has such a sense of direction. It's inspiring me. You know, and at the time, we all had these long runways, right? There was a lot of life out in front of us. There. It's another way of saying we were much younger. Yeah. <laughs> long runways. Okay. And, you know, so you, you know, you could really work on these things. I just listening to you this morning, I feel the same way. I feel inspired to, yes, double down on my commitments and my patience and being brave and all the things that you, you, you inspire us to do. Um, but I'm not too sure about the runway now, you know, Liz, I mean, is it, is it a driveway I have? Is it a runway, you know, but I think in either case, it's just, okay. it's time. It's time to, to, you know, don't waste the time. So I, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, you've got the right idea, Julie forward. That's the key. That's the key. <laughs> and, and West Liz, forward and West, West, yes. West Northwest. That's okay. where we're headed. <laughs> Okay. That's where we're all well, some of us. I would, say I, I, would, I would say for the younger members of our family, I think y- you you guys are providing that same you know that same sense of family and community too. Like I I know that my kids look up to you and and what you guys have done and and your families and things like that and and feel that same sense of safety and inspiration. So that's lovely too to carry that on. Yep. All right. It's Thank a you, good legacy legacy. You know, in Sense of Direction, I wrote an essay entitled, Hello, My Name Is, about really not settling 
in on my name during my married life. You know, I tried in the first 20 years of my married life, I tried and tested a variety of surnames, as you may have been aware. I was <laughs> just Dolan. Uh, then for a brief time, I had Dolan hyphenated Smith. Okay, that did not last too long. Then I tried the triple name, the Julie Dolan Smith. Okay, that that was a lot to say. Then for a pe big period of time, I went, oh, I went to just Dolan when I went back to work. I stripped down. I'm just, I'm just Julie Dolan, nothing else. And mm -hmm. then, then when I moved overseas, it seemed like Smith was the easier, easier way. But in all of these uh, configurations, I was, I guess I was trying to, str I was struggling with the idea of incorpor incorporating my total life experiences into my name. Um, and now, you know, certainly I have an identity as a Dolan sister, as a satellite mm. sister, okay? Mm. That has been so fundamental to who I am for the last quarter of a century, and it's very transforming. But I'm convinced today that once you're a satellite sister, you are always a satellite sister. Uh, Leon wrote in Pep Talk about leaving a legacy this past week, and I feel like one of the that I'm one of the beneficiaries of the entire Satellite Sister experience. The people, the places, the ideas that we've talked about. I mean, the experience has been so rich and so layered that, you know, sisters, you know, we had a conversation this past week about the passing of uh, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. And I was convinced that we had talked to her on Satellite Sisters. <laughs> But we had not. But the thing is, we had talked about uh, Justice O'Connor several times. Yeah, several times. So I felt like she is part of the identity. She is part of our experiences. And and I think that as you think about going far uh, forward or northwest, if that should be your direction, I, I want to put in a pitch for south. It's a very fine direction as well. OK, OK. That you can take all of these shared experiences that we've had together uh, into into the next chapter. So, whatever it okay. is, whether it's Dolan Smith, I'm always going to be a satellite sister. That's Yay. true, Joel. That's, That's true. totally true. That's true totally of all true. of us and to everyone listening. Um, yeah. I wrote in the book about um, I, you know, this was. So 20 years ago, before everyone had like a mentor and a role model, before that was like a job description, <laughs> I had you guys and I called you my guinea pigs because you you were ahead of me, you know, uh, as I've said before, a decade ahead of me. And you were out there making mistakes and, and wearing great clothes and listening to cool music and making a few more mistakes and drawing the attention and ire of mom and dad. And I could just like, watch, you were the guinea pigs. <laughs> and I was learning from your behavior. And I actually think it's better than a role model. Because if you had to be a role model, you would have had to be good all the time. But the great mm -hmm. thing about having a guinea pigs, you can see them, you know, roll around in the mud quite a bit. And I loved it. <laughs> so I just want to thank you now for being great <laughs> guinea pigs for me, for doing things things that I could see and then I could tweak a little and make my own. I called uh -huh. it in the essay, uh, you know, when I went off to college, for instance, I knew I wanted to go to a small liberal arts school like you guys had, but I wanted to do it in California, which was wildly different than where you guys had gone on the East Coast. And so I called it deja nu, not deja vu. I wanted to have oh. a similar experience, but oh. not exactly right. Okay. And so I guess now it's my time to publicly thank you for being guinea pigs and for trying stuff out. Julie, for being the first working mom I knew and for making that happen. And you wore those, you know, horrific floppy bow tie shirts. I mean, <laughs> it, they, they were, they were my very sister. in vogue at the time. <laughs> yeah. You and my sister-in-law, Mary, I saw how, you know, you guys tried to make it work with your advanced degrees and your careers and your kids. And that was super valuable. Liz, you went off and did something really fun. And like, I came of age in the eighties when it, it appeared the only jobs you could be were doctor, lawyer, or a corporate raider. So uh, I just was surprised there were other jobs outside those three job descriptions. And when all my classmates went to business school or law school, I became a cocktail waitress. And thank you, Liz. That's for you. Because you turned me. You serpentine, serpentine. You don't have to, you don't have to go straight, straight ahead all the time. I went west and I serpentined. Totally 
Totally great. And obviously when we did the show, I, I've said this, we've all said it a million times, but we learned so much about each other doing this show. And mm-hmm. uh, and it was a great way for us, I think, to vault. We didn't get stuck in childhood patterns because we had to go to work with each other every day. We had to mm-hmm. allow that people had, in fact, gained skills and knowledge <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and had talents that that as younger children, we did not see. So uh, again, just big thanks for being my guinea pigs out there. Deja vu, not deja vu. (laughs) I love that, Leanne. And you're welcome. You are welcome. welcome. We're going to, (laughs) is this a continuing role? You're still monitoring our our bar (laughs) successes and our our failures there. Okay, good. Good. I think we established our sense of self. None of us wants each other's lives. So I think that's the other key. Yeah, I think that's the key to the whole operation at Satellite Sisters, that we admire each other and their lives, but we don't want them in any way. It's a good choice for you, though. Knock yourself out. Uh, All right. Three things that I had as a list in uh, Uncommon Senses were three things I learned by 40. So now I am, well, at least 20 years older than that. (laughs) And... um, (laughs) The uh, so here were my three things, and uh, are they still true? Did I haven't learned anything new? Mm, you can be the judge. Number one was just because your job changes doesn't mean your personality does, and that's because I had left sort of the high stress corporate world, and uh, when we started Satellite Sisters, and I just really my way of working did not really change as much as I expected it. To. Nope, still a high stress way <laughs> of working, Liz. Still, <laughs> I know. You know, Liam. I woke up this morning and I thought, okay, okay, we do the last show today. Then I got to get to start on those newly rediscovered Satellite Sisters episodes we'll be posting. And I was like, no, take the afternoon <laughs> off for God's sakes. And you were working on the store earlier this morning, Liz. So you're still doing it. I'm charging ahead. (laughs) Okay. So that's number one. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm ever going to change that much, but oh, well. Number two, making a decision to work on something that is worth it is totally worth it. Mm. And the reason I was having this thought, you know, 20 years ago is that when I first left Nike, I knew that we were going to, we were trying to invent Satellite Sisters, but I actually needed something like I needed a J-O-B. I needed some kind of, some kind of paying gig. Paying work, paying work. Yeah, I needed, yes. I needed paid work like everyone else in Income the world. Income stream. Yes. So I got, um, I got a call and I was asked to work on the uh, marketing for the Women's World Cup in 1999. And I got a lot of other not appealing calls, but that one I thought, wow. You know, this could be a really big deal in women's sports. This could really be transformative in some way. And so I did it and I loved it and it was. Mm -hmm. And it was just totally worth it to uh, to be able to move on to something like that. And I feel that way about Satellite Sisters even now that we've always had this thing to work on, even if I've had other jobs, you know, because I've had other real jobs while we've been doing Satellite Sisters. It's just been such a pleasure to be able to work on Satellite Sisters with you guys, but also be able to be, you know, have this dialogue we have with so many women, like all over the place with whom we have actually become very close. So 100% worth it. And then the third thing I wrote is sometimes we can't see what's next until we've put what's now behind us. Liz, yeah. that was so wise. That was that is that is. I mean, and, and you... well written. Well, that's very tidy. That's a very I, tidy I mean, sentence. Okay. But <laughs> that was that's like a giant thought for for it, for a forty something person. Yes. Yeah. But I, isn't it true now? Like it's kind of what we're doing now. Right. We are we are all trying to make space in our lives for something new, and we agreed that we needed to put this aside, not entirely, but parts of Satellite Sisters, the weekly podcast aside, so that we can really see what's next. And so I'm I'm very happy to know that like, yeah, that's the way it works. So I'm very upbeat about the future. So uh, forward, sisters, forward. (laughs) Sometimes we can't see what's next until we put what now behind us. I did not read. Let me me try that again because it's dramatic. Sometimes we can't see what's next until we put what's now behind us. Well done, Liz. I like it. Liz, Liz, I have two words for you. Wall plaque. That would make a very nice... (laughs) 
I thought you were going to say T-shirt because no, no, no. It's too, <laughs> it's too deep. It needs to be too much. Know, a wall plaque. Yeah, then you'd and hang. that picture of the cat hanging on to the tree. <laughs> that poster. Hang in there, baby. It's yeah. a little better than hang in there, baby. It is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but it is true that even last night I was burning the midnight oil, working on da 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 our special limited edition merch for this finale show. You know, we thought it was appropriate for our finale to issue a new collection using one of our favorite Satellite Sisters lines of all time, which is no follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> and you, usually when we deployed this line, it was when we realized that we had a very thin understanding of the subject <laughs> we were talking about. <laughs> and, you know, remember, we weren't always just a one hour, once a week podcast. Those All those years we were live on the radio, three hours a day, six days a week. Uh, Leon, as you always say, we would have talked about anything. And <laughs> sometimes we, and we were often trying to talk about the news, but we didn't really have a full <laughs> understanding of the subject matter. So we would either say it when we were like recording the show, or sometimes we would warn each other in advance, like, okay, I'm going to talk about this, but please, no follow up questions. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it seemed perfect for our finale that no follow-up questions uh, be uh, be our, our current collection. So go to the Satellite Sister shop and check out our tees and hoodies and mugs in the no follow-up questions collection. And, you know, we've also got logoed merch, the Satellite Sisters logos. Julie, you uh, inspired the Urban Nana collection. Yes, yes. And Nana Camp. You look like you're investing heavily in that for the holiday season. Yes, I think I, I mean, I can't think of a more perfect gift for for everyone I know. So, yes. And now that you can get it in so many colors, Liz, that's yes. what I like. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I ordered a no follow up question uh, T-shirt this morning in purple. OK, it's going to be. Cute. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on the dashboard, of course. First thing I do every morning, check the dashboard. And I was like, wow, Julie going with the purple tea. Nice. <laughs> so so we have that. We have Stay Noisy. We have Two Paws Up. And of course, we have the Big Fun Weekend collection. So the best way to get to the shop is go to SatelliteSisters.com. And in the upper right hand corner, you just click on shop. So there we go. No follow up questions. Julie and Leanne here with this week's Entertaining Sisters brought to you by BritBox. You know we love BritBox. It's the streaming home of the best of British TV with exclusive content you can't find anywhere else. We're talking gripping crime dramas, classic mysteries, comedies, documentaries, more than you want to watch all in one place. Julie, you have watched the new season of Shetland. Tell it's us all back. about it. It's back, Leanne. It's back. All the things that we love about Shetland are there. The incredible landscape, the cool characters, the interesting crime plots. But this season, Leanne, there's a new DI in town. D.I. Ruth Calder. OK, can you imagine? We have a brand new character that's going to be doing crime solving on Shetland. OK. And it's a woman, right? That is and yes, that's kind of the big yes. twist. So. Yes. That's, right. So she's in charge, but she grew up in Shetland Land. So there's oh. a big backstory that we don't know about, yeah. but we're going to find out about. Yes. Okay. And you like that you like her so far. So far. Oh, I love her. I'm all in. I'm all in with uh with D.I. Ruth. Okay. All right. That is Shetland on Britbox. You know we love that series, and it's back with a brand new season with two female leads. Very exciting. BritBox is available to stream from any device. You can watch anywhere at any time. And for Satellite Sisters listeners, there is a special offer. Sign up for BritBox today to watch Shetland and Payback and all the other great British programming. And there's a special limited time offer for U.S. and Canadian listeners. You get 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan, but only if you go to BritBox.com and use promo code SISTERS at checkout. Don't wait. Get 50% off your first month. Use promo code SISTERS at BritBox.com. SISTERS at BritBox.com. And tune into Shetland. 
Liz, you know that saying, your presence is the best present? Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. that one? Yeah, okay. I've heard that. Yeah. Well, I kind of believe in that, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, are we over things? We're over things. Um, but, <laughs> but this holiday season, calm wants you to show up as your best self. With Calm, you can practice exercises that help you feel more present to the life around you and have a deeper connection with the people you love, which is literally what Satellite Sisters all, is all about, having a deeper connection. And Calm can help you get there. Liz, you use Calm, right? I do. Oftentimes, it's the middle of the night, Leon, when you really do just need to calm down sometimes, you know. Uh, but I love start, starting the morning with Calm. It's a great way to ease, your, ease yourself into the day, Leon. Yeah. So Calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation, giving you the power to calm your mind and change your life. Now, everybody has unique challenges. We know that. Calm knows that. Mental health needs differ from person to person, but Calm strives to provide content that caters to your preference and needs. Just this week, a friend of mine signed up for Calm with our special deal, and I was able to say, hey, go here. You might want to try this. I love doing this. This is my particularly favorite meditation for the middle of the night. Here's the, you know, the stretch class I like in the evening. These tools make you feel better and they're right in your back pocket. Go to calm.com slash satellite and you'll get a special offer of 40% off your Calm premium subscription. So if your goal is to stress less, sleep more and live better with Calm, now is the time to do it during the holiday season because really your presence is the best present. So for listeners of Satellite Sisters, Calm is offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash satellite. Go to calm, C-A-L-M, calm.com slash satellite for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash satellite. Thanks, Calm. Okay, we're back. This is Julie, and we want to talk to you, dear, dear listeners, and everyone in the Satellite Sisterhood, um, because Liz, Leanne, and I, and I suspect Monica and Sheila as well, have spent the week reading your beautiful and thoughtful comments that you've posted on our Facebook page or sent, uh, sent to us uh, via email. Um, we've read every word, maybe twice. I just want to personally let you know that I have printed out every comment and placed it in a plastic folder, which is wow. in my house, that is the highest level of honor you can <laughs> short of lamination. Keep capturing it in a plastic folder means so much. Your your comments are so meaningful, so thoughtful. You were so encouraging. You know, and there are so many beautiful themes, sisters, that I think that came through as part of the comment. And one theme is what I call the arc of time. I mean, you wrote to us about how you first started listening to Satellite Sisters. In some cases, you were sitting in the back seat of your mother's car, and she was actually the one listening to the show. But then you grew up and you became a mother and stayed with us. And We've all been so through nice. so much, and that was so beautiful to see, right? Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. We've uh, been through a lot. The second together. theme yes. that I, the second theme that is so strong and that I think will carry us forward is that sense of community. Um, we didn't create this. You all create, you, everyone created this community where people, very different people, can come together, they can gather, they can share, they can comfort each other, they can amuse each other, and our community goes forward. And that is going to be a great source of strength for uh, for all of us um, in 2024, for sure. Yeah, Jill, the ones, this is Leanne, and the ones that really got to me, I mean, they all got to me, you're right, I read every word, uh, just really, really lovely um, but the ones that, that really touched me were the ones where people mentioned their kids versus my kids or their kids and my kids, uh, that that sort of arc of time. But it's it's very it, it's very um, present when you think that I recorded the, our pilot show when Colin was seven months old. I OK, uh, and that was in 1998. We recorded the pilot. We didn't actually go on till 2000 because then we had to raise all the money. Uh, which no one told us about, but, um, <laughs> but that was, remember, 
Yeah. That was so inconvenient. We just <laughs> thought we were going to get right on the air after our great pitch. <laughs> Column is seven. When we tape that pilot, he turns 26 in a couple of months, which is his whole life, you know? Which, See, that's okay, it. Gonna, yeah. yeah. I'm going to cry now, but I mean, it's his whole life. And that's a lot of people mentioned that, you know, their kids were similar ages and that that was the connection. And I remember when we got on the air and it was crazy because, again, I had no credentials, really. No one knew. It was just a, a mom and a, and a writer and a producer at that time. And uh, I really thought, well, I guess I have a role, you know, here because it seems like there are a lot of other moms in media, but you know, they're hosting the Today Show. And of course they have full-time nannies and everything like that. But I just, I thought maybe there was a place to talk about motherhood in a more real way, like as if like real yes. friends in your mother's group might. And I actually thought that was my role. And then I remember the very first time I got um, an email, someone asking my advice on child rearing. I was like, well, this seems like a real... <laughs> A real leap. I'm not sure if I'm ready to give <laughs> advice to people, but I had to kind of take that on. We had a lot of parenting experts on the show. I, yes, I did a lot of did. reading. I really kind of leaned into that because I could see that was a real need. So to hear from people who I know have listened to the show when their kids were babies and their kids are now in their 20s. And I'm just so grateful, you know, to have had that connection with you. I'm also grateful just that my kids are here. You know, they're healthy. Yeah. They're in yes. stable relationships. Yes with really great partners, nothing else matters. And it's just been a very powerful connection that I've had with the parents in the group whose kids somehow somehow made it, you know, from seven months to 26 years old. So those were very touching to me. Thank you. Very touching. And, you know, it's a longtime listener, Lori Levine, who first called us, my friends in my ears. She explained yeah. to us that that's what she tells her friends about us. Yes. Um, but many men, we immediately stole that line. So thank you, Lori. Um, but so many of you uh, always told us about how you felt like we were your real friends, real friends, not just voices on a podcast. And you would say, I always use your first name like you were my best friends. Or I love that. <laughs> That's the best. That is like so tender <laughs> to me that, you know, you would honor us with in that way. I love yes. that. Yep. Yeah. Or, you know, you often wrote, my family laughs whenever I tell a story from a friend and they always say, is that friend one of the Satellite Sisters? <laughs> and yes. So, you know, here's the thing. We feel that way, too. We feel that way about you. And you totally have our permission to call us by our first names and stay in touch. <laughs> That's why sense of connection is the most important of all the Satellite Sisters on Common Senses. Liz, I just want to add, I got a funny comment today. You know, a lot of mail carriers listened to us back in the day when we debuted on satellite radio. Right. So we had a very large long haul trucker and mail carrier mm -hmm. population, mm -hmm. particularly rural mail carriers who were out there. So, so she mentioned today that for years when she referred to Leah, Liz, and Julie, her um, her family thought she was talking about her coworkers. And they only <laughs> <laughs> years into Satellite Sisters, wait a minute, those are people on the radio? You don't know those people? <laughs> you know what? That's when the best. Work, yes, she does. Home, she yes. knows them. We're her co-workers. Right. Yes. yes. When you work at home, I consider the FedEx people and the mail carriers my co-workers, so it's mutual. <laughs> it's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. But you're right. So Again, thank you so much for all of the comments. Our email is hello at SatelliteSisters.com. Uh, it's been fun to get the emails. You heard Julie. She's printing them out. She's printing them out and she's putting them in plastic. So that's how much they mean to us. Thank you. We're so happy to have Jenny Kane as a sponsor of Satellite Sisters. First of all, she seems nice. And yes. we really... That's Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> and, and we really, really love her products, her clothing, the home goods, the candles. Liz, I even have new face cloths for my guest bathroom from Jenny Whoa. Kane, and they are sweet. Whoa. But um, Liz, in honor of this holiday season, you're wearing your A number one holiday look. And what is it? Well, can you hear it in my voice, Leanne? Can you hear how casually elegant I am feeling right now? Because I bought the Jenny Kane cashmere half zip. 
in ivory, which you always say is a flattering color on everyone. Mm-hmm. So yes, I'm I'm enjoying it. I've worn this so much, you know, because you can wear it to like super casual things, just out and about, you know, your dog parking it, whatever. Uh, but I've worn it to several holiday events already. It's always appropriate. Nice cashmere half sip. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, again, ivory weight is really a good color on you, Liz. I'm looking at you right now and it looks great. Thank All you. right. You know, we love the Jenny Kane cashmere. We love everything about Jenny Kane. So even if you're just looking, just looking to enjoy yourself this moment, head on over to JennyKane.com because it's very relaxing over there. Give yourself and your loved ones the best gift of all. Jenny Kane, our listeners at Satellite Sisters get 15% off their first order when you use code SISTERS at JennyKane.com. That's 15% off your first order at JennyKane.com. And Jenny Kane is J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E. JennyKane.com and use code SISTERS. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. All right, Satellite Sisters and Misters, you've heard us sing the praises of pros and their truly custom made-to-order hair care. Switching to a custom routine from pros is one of the best things I've done for my hair. And the results, Liz, they just keep getting better. And Liz, I have bigger hair goals for 2024. I want to start right now with those. (laughs) I think people forget that they need hair goals. You know, they are an important subset of your life goals because nobody wants a bad hair day ever. So I'm, I'm for you, Leanne. New hair goals. Go for it. What are they? Yeah, resolutions are they're overrated. Hair goals, much more important. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to be spending a lot more time in the pool uh, this winter. I'm looking forward to getting into the pool at least three times a week doing my deep water aerobics classes, but that takes a toll on your hair, that pool water. So I went in and retook my pros in-depth hair quiz. Okay, oh, Liz, yeah. you know, they analyze 85 personal factors mm-hmm. so that they can pick clean, sustainably sourced ingredients to get me closer to my hair goals with every wash. But I wanted to make sure that like my pool time was in that quiz. So yes. I'm excited that a new formula has arrived for me. They were able to tweak that formula. And I think I am going to be looking good in 2024. Thank you. Tweak Chris. it. Tweak it in 24. <laughs> I like it. Custom made to order hair care from Pros has your name all over it. Take your free in depth hair consultation and get this is a great offer 50% off your first subscription order today, plus 15% off and free shipping every subscription order after that. Go to pros.com slash sisters and pros is P R O S E. Pros.com slash sisters for your free in-depth hair consultation and 50% off your first subscription order. Thanks, pros. Liz, I'm excited. You know it's going to arrive any minute here at my house? Santa? <laughs> Better no. than Santa, Liz. Better than Santa. Better than Santa. What is butcher it? Butcher box. My butcher box, Oh, Liz. my God. Holiday butcher box. <laughs> You're going to be so ready for the season. I am. I mean, this is it. It's delicious, wholesome meals I'm going to be making because mm-hmm. butcher box tastes like takes the guesswork out of finding high quality meat with humanely raised beef, pork, chicken, seafood, and as I mentioned, delivered to my doorstep. Mm -hmm. And after a long busy day, uh, there's no better feeling than just reaching into that freezer and knowing that I have something that I can trust to make for my family. And guess what I'm getting myself? I just, I have, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pot roast weather here, Liz. So oh, I am excited to have oh, a pot Here in roast Southern roast. California, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> no. Pot roast, <laughs> yummy. <laughs> so I, I planned ahead and I cannot wait when that butcher box arrives. I'm going to defrost that pot roast. It's happening this week because the temperature has dipped under 70 degrees. Uh, (laughs) So if you want to get the high quality meat, the convenience, uh, you know, the great customer service, here's what you do. You're going to sign up at butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters to get free chicken wings for a year. That's right. That's wow. three pounds of free range organic chicken wings free in every order for a year when you sign up at butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters. Butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters. Thanks, Butcherbox. We're back. We're the Satellite Sisters. Lee and Liz and Julie here. Thanks so much for being with us. You made it to 
he made it to the C segment where we're going to talk about our themes for 2024. Mm -hmm. Um, But first, I want to remind you, you know, we are trying trying to stay connected with you. We would love to sustain this community. Uh, We've put a lot of time into it, as have you. So there are a lot of ways. If you haven't already subscribed to Pep Talk, please do that. Uh, That's going to come every other week in your inbox for 2024. I love writing Pep Talk and um, we'll have links to all kinds of things and a Pep Talk and we're going to have entertainment recommendations there and a few elements from the show are going to move over to Pep Talk. Um, So to do that, just go to Satellite Sister com and there will be a pop-up right there in about one second you'll get a sign up pop up and just put in your email um we don't we don't really sell the email list or anything because we've never really monetized anything we've done so uh so it's just <laughs> you know so, so we're, we're gonna start that. now yes that's right <laughs> i start now uh also stay uh, stay connected on the socials uh you're gonna find us on instagram at sat sisters on threads satellite sisters uh join our facebook group if you want to join the facebook group i do need you to answer the membership questions just so we know we'd like to keep the group um small enough so that it's people who do listen to the show and sort of understand how we how we work here at satellite sisters mm-hmm. so we would love that and if you're not yet subscribed to the show or follow the show um please do that because the the rediscovered episodes satellite sisters rediscovered are going to start in mid january you're going to get um re-edited versions of some of our classic shows from our radio days um we're just going to go for the fun and the funny we might go for some serious i don't know we don't know what's in these shows no, just we, don't, we, don't know. we certainly don't remember any of it so <laughs> It'll be new to us too. Yeah. Could be the lost interview with Sandra Day (laughs) O'Connor. Maybe that's in there. Uh, uh, But, uh, you know, signing up for a few things and we promise not to to spam you. That will help help you stay connected. All right, Liz, it's time for our themes for 2024. Usually we do this the first show of 2024, but it's really, you know, fit seemed very fitting now to talk about this for sense of direction. We have had questions about, what what we're going to be doing. And I don't think we have any big secret plans. I think we are still trying to figure it out, but you're going to get some clues in our themes, I think. Right. Clues yeah. in our themes. We've got some goals. We definitely have, beyond the hair goals, we do have a few life goals. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, so I'll go first. So when I was thinking about what I want to do with my 2024, you know, I was thinking, I feel like, I feel like I got kind of an extra long pandemic because in addition to what we all went through uh, during the pandemic. I also had the lefty situation. Mm. You know, I I badly broke my leg and my knee and it has been a long haul. The recovery from that is still going on. So, uh, but like, I got to get it behind me and I got to, here we go. Here's the theme. What I have to do in 2024, sisters, I need to bust out. That is my theme, (laughs) but... Bust out. And uh, the I need to just like get out more, get better, move around, get up, get back out into the world. So um, I I actually thought about using Bust a Move, uh, but but we can't afford that music rights situation. <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would not be good. That would could bring the whole operation down. So this is the first and last time I will ever sing on the podcast. Oh, uh, we go to um, we often go to an uh, a comedy show here in L.A. called Uncabaret. And at the beginning of Uncabaret, Beth Lapidus, who runs the Uncab, sings a song that starts like this. And, okay, we might have to edit this out, but I'm going to try it. (laughs) See things change, makes us so unhappy, but you've got to change to be happy. There you go. That's it. That's my, okay. I mean, wow, Liz. Wow. I mean, (laughs) never, never, never that you're singing on Satellite Sisters. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Liz. Bust out. Bust out, Liz. That is a a bust out move. No doubt about it. But I think what she says is so true that change makes us unhappy, but the only way to be happy is to change, right? (laughs) So 
there you go. That I could have just said that instead of singing it. So whatever. Uh, I'm trying. Very to bust- brave of you, Liz. Bravery. Very brave. <laughs> have Sergio okay. slap some auto tune on that. It's going to be good. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> or take it out entirely. So, but literally, what I'm going to do in 2024? The first half of the year, I'm really, I really am focusing on my mobility. I have another surgery in February. I'm this will be my third, and I'm hoping this will be the last. I'm really trying to get up and around so that I can move about uh, without any uh, without any limitations. So first half of the year, totally focusing on mobility. And the second half of the year, I'm really focusing on getting myself just into an atmosphere of new ideas and new people. Not that you people aren't great. You people, Lee and Julie, you're great. <laughs> you're done with us now? Okay. Same Thanks, old Liz. ideas, same okay. old people. Okay. <laughs> no, no, but more. I feel like I need to, it seems so simple, get out of the house and mix it up with new people. That's really what I'm trying to do. So I'm okay. going to, I'm applying to school, more on that later. I'm Anyway, so... Second half in an atmosphere of new ideas and new people. There you go. I am busting out, sisters. That, that's oh, it. Liz, you slid that in. Applying to school. That I know. I heard that. You, quite a few people. Yeah. You, okay. You know she's going to get in wherever she. No, is. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah whatever. I, okay. When, if and when that happens, I will tell you. But okay. no, whether it happens or not, that's it. Bust out. All right. Okay. I like it, Liz. That's great. And I, I can reveal to people on the show notes, it actually has an exclamation point at the end of it. Oh. Bust out. So it's just, it's that's key. exciting. That's key. Yeah. You can't, that's you exciting. have to say it that way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So for me, 2024 is the year of less is more. And mm. that is not a sexy phrase, but it is deeply powerful to me. I mean, I have loved doing all the things that I've done over the last three or four years. I've had some amazing opportunities. Uh, it, it's fantastic to do this show and to be out meeting people and to do speaking gigs. I've loved writing the newsletter, uh, figuring out production issues has been has always been interesting to me. Uh, I had an ex- incredible experience producing um, the International Women of Courage celebration and going to the White House last year. Uh, and on top of that, over the last four years, I've written four books and uh, four novels, real books, actual books. And um, not too shabby, sister. Amazing. Amazing. So. That's a lot. That's more is more. You know, that's more is more, you guys. And uh, what I would like is just less, less of that. So I am divesting myself of a couple of creative projects that I've done. I'm no longer producing the International Women of Courage Awards. I'm working in the committee in a very small role. And I'm very, very happy about that. That kind of opens up the first three months of the year. I have loved doing Satellite Sisters and producing it. But one of the reasons the show has sustained itself is because we take the show and the schedule very seriously. And mm-hmm. so just to have a couple of extra days a week to be able to maybe do nothing is going to be very exciting to me. And uh, currently right now, um, after we tape this show, I have to go back to finishing a novel that I'm very late on, but I'm going to get in by the end of, of 2023. Um, you can do it. You can I do can it. do it. But we have that's faith in you, Liam. In 2024, mm-hmm. I just want to do less. And I want to have the opportunity to work on a bunch of creative stuff that I have outlined, but I just literally have not had time to do. Some of it is feature. Some of it is novels, fiction. Uh, I have a couple ideas, like sort of like to write like an audio only book, like maybe mm. fiction just just for audio book, you know, like an, uh, an Amazon original, the Audible originals that they do. I'm kind of interested in that, doing something like that. I have two screenplays that are completely outlined uh, and have been outlined for two or three years that are just sitting in my drawer, uh, so to speak, that I have not had time to execute. You know, I took that Christmas movie class last year. I know. And I had a pretty good outline for a movie, but I- For a Hallmark didn't, movie. We were, I we're didn't have the two wait, or three Lynn. weeks yeah. to, to, to actually get it to paper. So I'm, I'm giving myself more time to just noodle around on ideas and kind of dig deep and figure stuff out. Uh, by doing less things. I also really want to enjoy the book tour I'm going to go on in April. And sometimes when you're on deadline for so many other things, things that should be fun, uh, just start to feel like another thing on the calendar. Yeah, so I'm really true. looking forward to, you know, 
the marriage sabbatical April 2nd comes out, but I won't have anything else to do that week if I'm if I'm debuting the book or traveling someplace. That's all I have to do. It's just be very present in that moment. So I am I'm really looking forward to all these things. Less less is more for me is a a great strategy for a couple of years as I you know figure out a few things that I want to work on and maybe some things that I've never done before. You know, there's, there's no reason I can't do some of this stuff. <laughs> no reason at all. <laughs> no, Lee, and I like, you seem very, yeah, you know, you, you seem very convicted uh, in terms of, you know, about yeah. doing Well, it. I have the I discipline, you know, you yes. can't do what I've done without the discipline, but now actually I just need more time to noodle around on stuff. Yeah. I mean, okay. my brain gets really crowded and I can't. You no, know, we don't want you to have crowded brain systems. No. <laughs> You know, I, I, you know, maybe quote something from Satellite Sisters on Common Senses. Sometimes we can't see what's next until we put what's now behind us. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. It is true. Like, just case in point, you know, we have worked hard on these last couple of weeks of shows. We wanted them to be meaningful to build this legacy. So after last week's show, I think we felt like, oh, okay, we've moved forward. Uh, and then Friday, I was in the pool doing aqua aerobics, and I got out, and all of a sudden, pop, like, Oh my gosh, the a very much needed plot point in my new book just came to me. I was like, oh, that's how I solved that. Like oh. I just, my brain was very busy and crowded. And then once I was able to let that go, I was like, oh my gosh. So now I know I can finish this book by the end of the month, but I, I just needed to get some stuff out of my brain first. <laughs> so, okay. So that's right. it. Less, less is more. Less it's going to be a good journey. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. Uh, I have a theme for 2024. You know, when we first started doing this on Satellite Sisters, I, I didn't really want to do this. You know, I, I like I never took up journaling. I've never made, you know, <laughs> never made, made New Year's resolutions. But no. now I really like to do the themes because they, they really uh, do help. I thought you meant the whole show you didn't want to do. <laughs> no, no, no. I wanted to okay. do the show. Just, okay. uh, just coming up with the theme for yeah. a year. You know, I was a little resistant, but uh, I've really, uh, I've come to enjoy and look forward to this process. So for me, my word for 2024 is float. Okay, now stick with me. Ooh. I am not talking about a dead man's float face down in water. Okay, <laughs> here's what I imagine, or here is my inspiration. Do you remember last year when I went to Mexico and I went to Sian Khan, the biosphere reserve in Mexico? And I, you know, they ta taught you how to put on a life preserver, sort of you step into a life preserver and you clip it on. So it's sort of like a diaper, but instead of floating down in the water, you're actually like sitting up in the water. And that way I could see this beautiful preserve and the fish and the birds and the gorgeous plants. Do you remember this? Yes, okay. I do. Yeah. So yes. that, and I let the current take me. I let the current Ooh. take me when I was in that preserve. So that's my inspiration. I am going to float this year. I'm going to sit up. I'm putting I'm putting on my life preserver <laughs> as a diaper. I'm going to sit up. I'm going to look around. Okay, I'm going to be very very alert, but I'm going to let the current take me where I where where it does. So I think that's new experiences, new adventures, uh new opportunities, uh new ways to do things. That's Float. I like and it. And for me, I have two sort of specific areas that I know I'm going to work on in 2024. Um, One is Nana Camp on the road. Okay. That's a new t shirt, Liz. Just get ready for that. <laughs> but it's my grandchildren are older now. Um, yeah. And they are at a fantastic age in order to do grandparent, grandchild experiences, small trips, big trips, you know, uh, you know, trips to the museum, whatever it is. I want more of that, especially Josephine and Evelyn, who because of COVID and many things I have we have not seen as much of. You know, that's a big goal for me to have more of these experiences with my grandchildren, you know, and their parents, well, they can come or not come. But I think <laughs> it's the relationship between 
the parent and the grandparent and the grandchild that is, you know, just pure gold, so precious. All the grandparents listening to this show know exactly what I'm talking about. So, so that that's going to be a, a big thing for me, and um, and I'll have more opportunity to do that. I would say the second thing is travel. You know how much I. I you know, I'll go anywhere, uh, pretty much. And I just love to travel. Um, I'm very excited to say that my husband and I are going to New Zealand. Uh, oh, wow. The year. So we're really looking forward to that. That is one of the places I've always wanted to visit. I, and I'm, I'm excited about that. But I think there will be other trips as well, because I, you know, when I travel, I learn and I just feel like that's a, a very important thing to be going on. So I will be floating. The current will be taking me. And but I'll be alert, sisters. Okay. <laughs> Just want you to know that. Okay. <laughs> Sounds delightful, Julie. Okay. Great. I like it. All right. Okay. Bust well, out, less is more, and float. There you go. That's what we're doing for 2024. That's the answer to that question. What's next? All right. Well, one last thing uh before we wrap the year, uh, sisters, you know. I read all the email that comes in. We have an email box, hello at SatelliteSisters.com. And I go through that regularly to see, like, what important messages are are we getting? And uh, so just this week, we got a very important email from corporate. So I wanted to share this with you because we don't hear from corporate very often. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, we actually got an email that says it's from... The SatelliteSisters.com HR department. Who uh -huh. knew? Who yeah. knew? Yes. And <laughs> this is from the, this email is from the Director of Human Resources. Ooh oh, pay at, attention. Yeah. At the Satellite Sisters HR department. So exactly, Julie, pay attention. And uh, it says, kindly use the below Excel link to check the staff memo referring to the above subject uh, from the HR department regarding low compliance to the annual vacation plan for 2023. Anyway, <laughs> what it means is that our director of human resources at corporate emailed us so that we would use this fake link or use this link to click through and tell them, when are we taking our annual leaves? Oh, that's and, a good idea. <laughs> yes. I think it's a good idea. I think clicking on the link not a good idea, <laughs> but it just seemed like out of the blue. And should we have further questions, kindly reply to this email. Thanks and regards, SatelliteSisters.com, Human Resources Department. <laughs> so it just made me laugh so much, but timely. No? So good thing to think about. We're taking our annual leave for 2023. <laughs> All right. That is our show. Uh, you know, we have uh, some people to thank. We'd like to thank, uh, first of all, our sponsors. And uh, it, it is really what has allowed us to do the show for 14 years as an independent podcast, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. a big thanks to our sponsors over the years, um, including the ones on today's show. We will be having sponsors in on the replays on the, the rediscovered shows in 2024 again it allows us to to maintain our platforms and our websites and everything like that so thanks to our sponsors and thanks to you for supporting our sponsors um really really been a very important relationship we'd like to thank our team at true native they are the ones that finds this find the sponsors for us uh this has been a good fit for our small indie podcast outfit and we really appreciate the hands-on work of everyone at true native we do. We yeah. had a human resources manager. It, Diane Gray is the closest thing to it. Yes. She's our business manager. Yes. She doesn't really dabble in human resources, though. Not really interested in, 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 in our vacation plans. But um, <laughs> Diane, thank you uh, for, for uh, you know, all the support and everything you've done for us over the years. A big thanks to Sergio Enriquez, our engineer. Sergio was staying with us to re-edit some of the Satellite Sisters Rediscovered shows, but we're always happy to work with him. Emily Borgine is signed up to, to stay on board. She's our graphic designer. Um, I think Liz is going to keep her busy with the pop-up shop. So oh, she's, yeah. abs she's ready. <laughs> she's ready for it. Emily, thank you. Have a, have a beautiful uh, holiday season. You're a newlywed, so it's always fun. It's always fun to have have your first Christmas together. Joel? Hey, we also want to thank our sisters, uh, Monica and Sheila, 
Together, the five Dolan sisters, we, well, we've had a ride of a lifetime. And we also want to uh, thank uh, thank our extended family. That's our brothers, our husbands, our sons, our daughters, our daughter-in-laws, the next-gen nieces, our nephews, and so many friends that were pressed into service and who helped us along the way. Actual professionals that taught us things, and um, that was really helpful, too. So thank you so much to our loyal dogs that have been with us <laughs> side by side. And of course, to mom and dad. Thank you. Okay. I was with you until you said mom and dad. Now, <laughs> now you're choking. Right. Now I'm choking up. All right. It's our to-do list, uh, to-do list for the day. I'll start. I mean, there's been, there's been talk that there's going to be a celebratory dinner hosted by my sons, Brooks and Colin, uh, and attended by my husband, Barrick, all of whom have been incredibly supportive of this enterprise. I could not have done it without my husband, Barrick, supportive in so many ways. My sons have been good sports. I've always been proud of what I've done. And they said, mom, we should take you out to dinner. And I said, yeah, yeah, you should. So, uh, <laughs> so where are so- you going? What's the plan? Yeah, no plan yet, Liz. I'm going to have to remind them of the celebratory dinner, but we're going to nail it down for this weekend. Celebratory dinner hosted by the men in my life. Very happy. Very happy about that. Okay. You've got, you've got that land. Okay. Yeah. My to-do may be a little confusing. My to-do is to leave my mic on. Let me explain. My husband uh, just this week floated the idea Uh, that he might want to repurpose my desk and chair that I have here in my closet into a fly tying station. That's right. (laughs) He wants to bring little bits of bugs and feathers to make flies for fly fishing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's an OMDB situation over my dead body. Is that (laughs) going to happen? Okay. That is never going to happen. Uh, This is permanent this is a permanent shrine here now in my closet <laughs> i am never going to cede this territory this surface <laughs> this ground to my husband the mic stays on yes nice, Just, nice. Yeah. hang on Julie. i mean can you imagine a fly tying station in your closet no Come that's on. gross that's, that's gross. just gross that's what that's- garages are for yeah <laughs> You never know when we're going to need to do an emergency podcast. Uh, Exactly, Liz. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. So hands off, hands off. Uh, Okay, so uh, my to-do list, again, just reinforcing that your job may change, but your personality doesn't. My first thought was maybe I could start. uh, I do have 17,952 messages in my email box, in my (laughs) inbox. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now, to be fair, some of those have been read. It's not like they're all unread, but I thought I should just start cleaning out my email box this afternoon. And then it was like, Liz, no, for God's sakes, take the rest of the day off. Take <laughs> the rest of the day off. So Tuesday night is water aerobics night in over here in my neighborhood, Liam, uh, at the pool where I go. And I go with my neighbor, Deborah, uh, on Tuesdays. And the instructor on Tuesday nights, Steve, who's very nice, ends every water aerobics class by saying, you know, remember, it's Taco Tuesday. Enjoy yourselves. So uh, so what I decided to do is I'm going to pre-order tacos and we'll go to water aerobics. We'll stop. We don't normally celebrate Taco Tuesday because we're in wet bathing suits, you know. So it's just not that. <laughs> it's not like you're going to stop for dinner in your wet bathing suit on your way home from the pool. But get the to to go order all lined up. Stop and pick up the Taco Tuesday order. Come home, changing some uh, dry clothes, and celebrate Taco Tuesday. So that's what I'm doing tonight. A little, yes. a little. A little party. Good good. planning makes good fun, Liz. Right? (laughs) Yes. Yes, it does. Once I change out of my wet bathing suit. And Liz, from now on, every Tuesday is Taco Tuesday. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. One last thank you to Melissa Farrick for giving us permission to use her song, Welcome to My Life, at the end of this podcast. Longtime listeners, this one's for you. Oh, boy. You guys, this has been great, huh? It's been great. What a ride. Yep. What a ride. And yep. going out on top. Yes. All right, going out you. with the bang. Yep. We're the Satellite Sisters. Don't forget. Call your Satellite Sister. Yeah, come on.